Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. I am Captain Xavier and today we're going to talk about doubling up springs. Someone asked me in the comments how do I double up a spring and I tried to explain it but apparently did not explain it well enough so I figured I'd just come out and make a video about it because I haven't done a Monday Mod Tips in a while. Um, so we're going to talk about doubling up springs. Why you might do it, how to do it, issues you might run into, advantages and disadvantages of various methods. Now why you would do it is to increase the power of your blaster. Doubling the spring should increase the power. How much? varies from blaster to blaster. Now why you would double up the spring as opposed to simply get a more powerful spring is mostly going to be cost and convenience. Now just about any blaster that exists today there's almost certainly a, an upgrade spring for it being made by worker that is sold either by out of darts or many of them you can get on Amazon nowadays. Um, and that would be the, the easiest way but you know if, if, if you don't have the money or it's not uh, convenient for you to order from either of those locations this this works just as well. You can get additional springs from other blasters. If you, you know, buy a whole bunch of blasters from Goodwill and it turns out some of them are broken or your blasters get broken or, or you just don't like them, whatever, you can pull them apart for parts. I've got videos on how to scrap blasters and you end up with a great big bin of random springs. And from that, if you can find the right spring, you can use that to double up. Alternatively, you can always simply get another of the blaster that you're wanting to aim to upgrade and pull the spring out of that because it will match. Now, there are two options. You can either get a spring that is exactly the same or you can try to find a spring that is either slightly smaller in diameter or slightly larger in diameter. Now the advantage of this is that it doesn't matter what the frequencies are. The frequency is how close together the, the rings are and in the other option, that will matter. But in this one, it doesn't matter because they're not actually going to be interlocking that way. It simply has to fit inside it. And so if the, if the, the coils don't line up, it doesn't matter because they're not actually going to be interlocking. Uh, and the advantage of this is that it does not increase the compression height. So when the spring is fully compressed, you can see how tall it is. And this doesn't add to that because the two coils are not interlocked and so they don't add to the compression height. And that means it's much more likely that the blaster will still be able to catch. If you increase that compressed height too much, then you might not be able to get the, the lock, the, the lip on the plunger rod or the plunger itself to reach the catch and actually be able to lock and prime the blaster. Uh, same goes for a larger spring, obviously. Um, they're not going to add their compression heights together. We're just going to get the compression height of whichever one is larger. Um, and again, the frequency doesn't matter because they're not interlocking. The, the disadvantage of these is, one, you have to find a spring that is, a, that is slightly larger or slightly smaller, which you might not have in your bin. And that still has to fit into the blaster. So if the one that's bigger is too big, it won't fit in the plunger tube anymore. And so that won't work. And if the smaller one is too small, it won't fit around the plunger rod anymore. And in some blasts, there's a huge amount of tolerance there and it's very likely that it'll fit. In others, it's fairly exact. You don't have a lot of room to work with um, as far as getting a, a, a larger or smaller spring in. And so that can be the disadvantage there. Now the other option, as I mentioned, is to get a spring that is the exact same size, preferably from the same blaster. Uh, they will have the same outside diameter, same frequency, same dimensions in pretty much every way. And you don't want to try to put them in like this because they're not going to line up well and it's going to pinch your plunger rod. And the same reason you don't want to simply slide them together this way. While that does kind of look like it works, there's nothing actually holding them together. And they don't really want to go together. They want to come apart. And that, again, can cause things to bunch up and, and bind and, and cause problems. So we want to actually properly thread them together, which can be a little bit difficult. We're going to line up the squared ends so that the, the very ends are together. And then we are going to try to force them past each other. so that they are, in fact, twisting over each other. And I'm... Nope, I missed. It can take a few tries to get it right. There we go. But once you do, 
it will become once once the two squared ends get past each other it's fairly simple to simply continue threading them together and you'll end up with a really nice looking double helix and if you actually try to pull them apart sideways they won't they are in fact linked they are coiled together and so they they actually more want to stay together now the issue with this as you can see at the ends where the squared ends are it's really a lot of extra material there and this is going to significantly increase your compression height you have doubled your compression height and that sometimes can be too much you'll hear me talk in, in k26 videos whether we're getting enough compression for it to catch and that's a matter of the notch on the plunger rod or the plunger head getting far enough to actually lock on the catch and keep the blaster primed and if that height becomes too much you won't be able to but typically with stock springs two stock springs over each other usually aren't a problem but if it is and if you're having a lot of trouble getting them to properly thread together like that there is an easier way or slightly easier way and that is to simply cut off the squared ends on one of your two springs because it really isn't necessary as long as one of them has squared ends and now it's really easy to simply thread them together and again they are properly threaded together they're not going to come apart and now they fit together really nicely and again it makes for a really nice looking double helix which is just nifty dna looking shape there and this reduces the amount of compression a little bit not a whole lot um you know the width of two rings uh which is going to be like an eighth or a quarter of an inch at most depending on how thick the wire is but it is something and it makes it a lot easier and as long as there is any pre-compression i mean just the slightest bit of pre-compression you won't end up with any spring rattle and it'll hold it it'll stay in place which pretty much all nerf blasters have at least some small amount of pre-compression which will keep that in place so that is the easiest way to thread your springs together and uh yeah that's that's my advice on doubling up your springs i hope this is helpful and thank you guys for watching